So you in the head and made your own YouTube based TV show It's an array of IPAs and fighters on the road Got a question? Put them in your comment section right below Barbershop talk while you're sitting in your living room Pacquiao, Mayweather, here we can't forget the bruise Coming to you live with the scoops like a ladle Allow me to introduce the box you around table You motherfucking too It's your boy, Rollo Jenkins just want to uh, uh, respond to uh, my boy seventy eight, and uh, he, he he dropped a couple of uh, very interesting videos outside the uh, box a little bit because everybody been kind of talking about the same shit, and uh, he touched on something that uh, I've been talking about forever. I say this shit. On numerous videos Scoring a fight It's like a fucking beauty contest You know what I'm saying The dude sitting next to me Watching the same fight that I'm watching He might like girls with big old asses The other dude on my right He might like girls with big old titties So they automatically Gonna be biased towards Girls with those attributes Me I like a big old ass you know, and if it came down to it, I'd rather have a big old ass than some big old titties. Some guys gotta have both. Some guys like them real slim. Some guys like them thicker than others. In boxing, it's the same shit. Some guys like aggressive fighters. Some guys like them slick. Some guys just like fighters who look like they look or act like they act. Some fighters just like brawlers some of them like a lot of activity some like a little bit of activity some like them to be precise efficient some don't give a fuck some just want to see action so when we talk about scoring a fight people got to understand i mean and 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 i and i i told i had a long conversation with a somebody about this when I, I got to the point where I realized it's like fucking wearing clothes and shit you see a dude out or a woman out and you're like god what the fuck she wearing that can't believe she wearing that shit ain't no shit that I would ever wear but obviously it was okay with that person scoring a fight there ain't no exact science there's no absolute hand actually in no sport is there absolute handbook Think about this. How many times in football has there been a touchdown or not a touchdown and half the people think that the call was wrong or right? Six points is six points. But the the point of what is an actual touchdown? You know, I remember years ago, the whole state of Michigan was upset about Calvin Johnson not getting that touchdown against the Chicago Bears in the first game of the season. Half of the people said it was a touchdown. Half of the people said it wasn't. Russell Wilson, Hail Mary against the Green Bay Packers. Somebody come down with the ball. Half of the people said it was a touchdown. Half of the people said it got robbed. I mean, at the end of the day, it was still six points. Basketball is the same thing. Some people say it was a foul. Some people say it wasn't. So now that person gets to go to the stripe and sink two or three free throws. Baseball. Balls and strikes all day long. You get you gonna have people complaining about balls and strikes forever. At the end of the day, when it's the score is one to zip. Or two to zip Or two to two That ball and the strike mattered in the game And probably even the outcome of the game But who clearly won Isn't Up for discussion And in boxing The only reason that it's so uh, How shall I say it So emphasized Is because they literally Pick the winner and the loser you know so how you score a fight 
um, it is completely up to you. I myself, I score fight in increments. I pretty much go minute of a round, minute of a round, minute of a round. And the way I do it is this. Um, I, I almost go um, kind of like the, a dollar system. So you could throw a punch that's worth a dollar, which is like a fucking stupid ass, stupid hard clean shot. Like some knee wobbling, falling to the ropes type of shit. You can throw a quarter, which is a good shot, you know, but not, you know, knee buckling or nothing. You can throw a dime or a nickel or a penny. You can throw a bunch of pennies. And to me, when I get done at that minute of a round, I try to add up the change. Uh, so let's say one dude throws a quarter. You know what I'm saying? A shot where I deemed it was worth a quarter. And that's all he lands in that first minute. And the other dude throws 10 dimes. You know? He won that part of the round. So then I go to the next minute or so, whatever. Um, I do the same thing. And see, some people don't count certain punches you know and uh people like to say clean effective punching and all that shit see when i say i don't i don't um i don't uh go by that effective shit if you throw a punch and it lands that shit ain't no different than another punch that lands because the effectiveness is in the result of the punch Sometimes you can see a person's body language. Sometimes you can see a person throw a punch and the opponent is clearly affected by it. Whether they wobble or stumble, you know, they start to grab or hold, or you can see them completely go into retreat mode. And it is the, the effect of the punch matters more to me than what the punch looks like. Because a lot of people throw pretty punches And a lot of people throw ugly punches That are very effective Let me give you an example And why I started to feel this way I used to work For the Tigers And I had the I wouldn't necessarily call it an opportunity But I had to watch Prince Fielder And Miguel Cabrera played together for a season, a couple seasons. So, during the time I worked and watched these two players, I would see one dude at the plate and look so comfortable and so at ease. And sometimes he would hit the ball and it would look like a fucking bloop single. And next thing you know, Dan Dickerson talking about way back and it's gone. But he didn't look like he swung the bat hard. And then you go to Prince Fielder and everything he swung at, he looked like that bitch was finna go out of the ballpark. Everything. So when he hit the ball and it looked like it was going to be a home run, which was every time, half the time he didn't do shit. So what difference do it make if your punches look hard? Same thing with... Uh, Pacquiao Every time Pacquiao throw punches He looked like they finna be hard as fuck But I don't never remember seeing him Hurt Brandon Rios Or Bradley You know what I'm saying in, in recent years The only person he's really hurt Is Marquez You know And Marquez In all of the three fights Or four fights that they had He never seemed like he hurt Pacquiao Until One punch Put that motherfucker to sleep you know So Had Pacquiao just taken that punch And played it off or whatever Or 
not been affected by the punch. People would say it wasn't a hard punch. But the fact that the matter is he put him to sleep gives the uh, the the uh, reality of the effectiveness of the punch without you even having to ask or even think about it. So when one dude, you know, let's say a Madonna, you know, he throws a bunch of nickels and dimes. To me, their punch is landed. You know, uh, I, I believe that it's a punch landed. You know, a lot of people like to say, well, it's not a, what they call it, a clean shot, a clean, effective shot or whatever. And one person lands clean shots, you know, to do these fighting. Well, the effectiveness of the punch is quite the same because neither guy looked hurt or stumbled or anything like that. So nobody in the fight landed any dollars. You know, I uh, gave one fighter a couple of quarters, but he landed very few nickels and dimes. So I kind of added up that way. Uh, I know that shit sound crazy, but like I say, it's just like any other sport. Uh, in football, you can run back a kick, right? And the other team can kick three field goals. One play is a big home run hitter type shit. And the other is born as I can't score a touchdown type shit. But at the end of the day, the score is 9 to 7. You know? You can hit 10 three pointers in the basketball game. That's 30 points. And you can also hit 30 free throws. And at the end of the day, it's still 30 points, you know? So you, you almost have to, at least I feel like you always have to give credit to the small things in the game, you know, because if you didn't, there would never be no need to do none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I try and balance things out that way. Uh, just like one of the major fights that, that uh, people were always so upset about. De La Hoya versus Trinidad and every time I watched the fight I seen it the way the judges seen it I seen Oscar trying to steal rounds at the very very end by trying to land a couple of dimes now Trinidad throughout the fight was penny and nickeling the whole round the whole three minutes of the round and then De La Hoya would try and come at the end and land a couple of shots but see, he wasn't even landing clean shots. He wasn't doing nothing super effective. So, to me, he tried to wait to the fucking end of the round and do a bunch of nickel and diamond. Well, Trinidad had been nickel and diamond the whole round. So, I gave very few rounds to, to De La Hoya because he didn't fight the whole round. And even when he did try and unload or, or do flurries, to me, they were ineffective. He wasn't doing shit. He wasn't landing clean shots. He wasn't landing dimes. I mean, uh, quarters and dollars, you know. So, to me, the score is correct, you know. I didn't I didn't have De La Hoya winning that fight by no margin at all, you know. I don't believe in that. I'm going I'm to wait to the end of the round or try and be selective with shit. Mm -mm. Because in boxing... It's easy to try and be selective and land only one or two clean shots like some fighters do. That's a cop out. That's some easy shit to do, you know? And when you're in a defensive posture and you stay defensive and some fighters stay defensive for too long, you shouldn't be rewarded for that shit, you know? I don't believe in that shit. So that's how I try and score fights. So I'm going to think that shit is crazy. And that's cool. You know what I'm saying? That's why we all have our own opinions on how we can judge a fight. And judging is subjective. And I've been saying this same. I don't know. I wish anybody can tell me a fight that they've been able to do this. A fight where you go. 
and you watch it live from your seat and you get home and you can watch your DVR and see what the fight looked like when you got to the crib on TV now I've told you on previous videos two occasions where I was able to do this and both times both fights were different than how I had seen the fights live when I watched them on TV the one that really surprised me was the Devin Alexander Timothy Bradley now we sitting there a little section you know me and my boy sitting there and we you know of course we kicking it with the people in the section and whatever and while we were there we literally thought Bradley was winning every round damn near 10-8 that's how it looked to us when I got home that fight was a even though I had Bradley winning still the fight was a whole lot closer than what I had been imagining when I was there at the arena there are things that just affect you when you're there that don't affect you when you're there in person and like 78 said you a judge you only get one cry ain't no re-watching it watching it again scoring it. none of that shit you have to be at the arena you have to be there live you have to absorb the atmosphere you got to look at all the big titty ass women in the, the fucking rain car girls the uh the little mexican chick over there pretty as fuck keep eyeing you and shit or you think she is the motherfucking hostess with the big old titties who keep walking by teasing the fuck out of you the crowd screaming every time one person fucking blink or breathe and shit all of this shit affects you you cannot not be affected by that shit you have to not be human to not be affected by that shit i don't see how anybody can say that they don't have bias or they don't don't understand that i mean you can't avoid all of those elements when you're at a fight live you just can't there is no replay they don't get to look back at some shit you know what i'm saying i got a, a five second back button on my remote when i'm at the crib i can't do that shit when you live you miss something you miss something reach down to pick up your beer and the next thing you know a motherfucker laying on the ground oh well so it is it's so difficult it's way more difficult than motherfuckers think that's why I don't use the word robbery anymore. I don't I don't talk about how a fight just like last September, one judge having it Canelo for a draw. And me and Zone, we sat down, we watched this shit, and he he came to the conclusion that you know what? It wasn't so far out as I thought seeing that fight a draw. You know? And see, people look at fights and they're at home, in the comfort of their own home. They can turn the sound down or they can turn the sound up. They can, you know, drown out the commentary or pay close attention to the commentary. They could go back and watch replays, all of that shit. When you live, you get a, you can't turn the fucking sound off. You can't drown the crowd out. You can't ignore the fact that they yelling every time one motherfucker throw a punch or somebody else lands a punch. You can't do that. And all of that shit affects you. And it's not a, well, judges should be professional and blah, 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 blah. Nah. Humans are humans. The same thing that affects a motherfucker at home is the same thing that's going to affect a motherfucker when he's at the arena. Whether they get paid for it or not, you know? I mean, do you think a doctor is not saddened when he loses a patient because he's a fucking doctor? You know, do you think the police don't get affected by throwing motherfuckers in jail because he's a police officer? Do you think that they want to be doing that shit? Do you think that a judge enjoys putting people in jail or telling them that they got life because they are a judge? That's their profession. Do you think that a judge isn't lenient sometimes? 
based on the fact that they may have a relationship with somebody or they're tired of seeing the same shit or they think that somebody deserves a second chance? Do you think that a police officer won't let some pretty ass big titty bro go get off a ticket because she's a big titty pretty ass bro? Because he's a professional? Nah. He's a motherfucking human being just like the two motherfuckers in the ring. Just like the referee, you know? It's your boy, Rollo Jenkins. Holla at your boy. Right, right.